be making bases. All right. So, so far we've talked about leveling, basically making sure we get the right levels between the different instrument tracks. We've talked about EQing and we've also covered compression. Now what I want to talk about is actually adding more space in the track. Okay. And you could do this or more depth in the track. You could do this several different ways. One of the ways to do this is through panning. Okay. And what that's going to do is instead of having all the signal going through pretty much the center, when you pan to the left or right, certain instrument sounds, it creates more of a wider and more of a spacier feel. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go ahead and do some light panning on, on some of these tracks to kind of show you or demonstrate um, some, you know, how that's going to affect the mix. So what the first thing you, of course, will do is listen to the mix. All right, so some of these sounds are, are obviously competing, and panning is really going to just help that all together. What, I, what you could do is kind of delete, not delete, but mute out some of these sounds and just listen and then add them here, you know, one by one. One thing to keep in mind that it, you know, when you're when you're um, panning your instruments left or right, it's important to have those instruments in mono a lot of times, uh, because in stereo it's going to give one type of feel, and in mono is going to give another. Mono is pretty much going to concentrate that signal into one path, okay? Compared to having it going left and right, um, you have it just going down one down the middle, and you can take it over to the left or right properly. So some of these instruments you want to have in stereo, it kind of gives a better feel. And some of these instruments you want to have a mono. And you and that's really just going through the mix and just playing them individually and seeing, all right, well, what do I want to be kind of like wider in both of the stereo track or both of the track, both signals, left and right? And what do I want to kind of be panned to the left or right?
And I'm sorry, you know, this is more so not something I can just say, all right, well, what you want to do is turn this over to the left this amount or turn this over to the right this amount. You kind of have to play with it. And what you're listening for is um, what's going to create the better um, the better room for each frequency. OK, because you got to think it takes this back to the aspect that all of these different instruments have different frequencies and you don't want them to, co to compete. Uh, along the spectrum this even matters with going left or right on the um in the you know in your mix so you know, what i do is i play around with certain of, of of you know instruments that have higher frequencies or lower frequencies and see how to how they can balance out together see like this this sound this instrument sound kind of has like a higher pitch you know what i'm saying um frequency and it it kind of cuts to the mix better as I move it over here to the left and move some of these other sounds to the right. So like, for instance, this sound, it kind of has more of a lower or mid mid range sound. And I don't want this competing with this sound. So say if we put it to the same, um, you know, on the same side, you see how that's kind of competing. But if I take it over here to the, to the right and have this one to the left, They sound a little bit more clear simply because this frequency, this this higher pitch frequency that does also have a certain level of mids is not competing with this frequency that has more mids and a little bit of highs. You get what I'm saying? So you want to balance these things out. You see how that doesn't this what this track was would, would compete if I had this panned over here to the left. All right. So these are just some techniques that you want to put into motion because it's really going to help your track. Um, another thing you could do is, of course, with the actual like um, your percussion instruments, like hi hats and stuff like that. So let's check that out as well. And as you can see here, it did it did open up the track a little bit and it made us made some of the instruments work a little bit better together. Now, of course, this is not something that can be done necessarily, okay? And I'm not going to say 100%, but necessarily, you know, in in a matter of 10 minutes or whatever, you might want to sit there and really listen to it and then make adjustments, come back to the track later, different things like that. But for teaching purposes, I really wanted you to kind of see more of a live demonstration rather than tell you, oh, just pushing the you know the signal to the left or to the right, it's going to add more stereo room. And then you don't understand why you push it to the left or the right. And the answer is because of the different frequencies of the tracks. You want to create more room, um, and that's going to create. You know what I'm saying? Make the tracks pop out a little bit better. So what you would want to do is go ahead and work on this track as I'm working on it, of course, and be making some of the changes here. You don't have to put the same settings, but you can, of course. You know what I'm saying? This is getting you to just understand the whole aspect of how to mix the beats 
Um, and as you, of course, practice, you, you got to practice, you got to be doing these things every day, mixing beats every day to get better. But um, yeah, this is what's going to create stereo uh, more of a, a wide feel to your music. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next lecture.